What is going on everyone? Let's talk about the housing projects. American history and urban lore filled with stories that came out of the projects. Every major city has or still has some form of public housing. During the Great Depression, the United States started looking into housing projects as a solution to the slums and the economic troubles the United States was facing at the time. One misconception was that they were designed and built for minorities and the poor. Not originally. The middle class was getting battered during the Depression and the government decided to step in. The government-funded housing projects all began with the mission to end slums, provide affordable, safe housing options, and save families from ending up on the streets. It didn't always end up that way. Since the 1970s, some of the worst have been taken down and replaced by better types of public housing. You see, at some point, we realized that huge towers with a whole bunch of people that were struggling was a nightmare. You had 10% of the residents being criminals and 90% were decent families living in fear of that 10%. They became out of control, and the only good thing that really ever came out of them was, I don't know, great crime movies, great crime TV, great rap and hip hop, normally rapping about great crimes. There is a great video about the history of those projects from a channel called City Beautiful. I'll leave a link below. Today's video is about 10 of the most notorious public housing projects in the United States, both past and present. They're in no particular order. I'm just gonna tell you 10 of the worst. I mean, really, how can you tell which one is the absolute worst? Just by reputation? That doesn't really seem right, so we're just gonna list all 10. All right, let's take a look at the worst United States housing projects of all time. Number 10, the Magnolia Projects, New Orleans. When you hear or see things about New Orleans, it always seems to be about the Saints, a hurricane, Bourbon Street, or Mardi Gras. The Big Easy is so much more. It has Cajun food, jazz, and some of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the country. New Orleans always seems to be a medalist in the Homicide Olympics we have here in the United States. The Magnolia Projects, aka CJ Pete Projects, definitely saw their fair share of death and violence over the years. The Magnolia Projects were the epicenter for gang activity through most of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. It was so bad, in 1990, the New Orleans Police Department had to put a police station in the projects. When Hurricane Katrina hit in 2005, Magnolia was evacuated and the projects were abandoned except for the homeless that had wandered in after everyone left. In 2008, the last Magnolia buildings were demolished and it was replaced by a new housing development called Harmony Oaks. That sounds so nice and pleasant, Harmony Oaks. Sounds like a resort. Number 9. Pruitt Igo, St. Louis, Missouri. Pruitt Igo started off on a good note. It was designed by the same guy who designed the World Trade Center. So that's kind of cool. Prude Igo started moving people in in 1954, even though the whole thing wasn't completed till two years later in 1956. It was originally designed to be a segregated public housing. Yeah, really. Keep in mind, this was Missouri in the 1950s, and that was sort of normal for this part of the country back then. This was a failure not too long after opening. A lot of it had to do with the elevators and the design of the buildings. The original design by the architect Yamasaki was for various types of buildings, walk-ups, high-rises, low-rises, mid-rises, all of it. It was all designed really nice with parks, all that good stuff. And then the government got involved. The housing authority came in and made all kinds of changes, including a uniform 11-story building. So they were all these 11-story buildings. The elevators only went up three floors each building. Yeah. So it went up three floors. You would have to get out, walk to the other end of the building and go up another three floors, walk to the other end of the building and go up another three floors. If you lived on, let's say the 10th or 11th floor. Yeah, that sucks. Some people would just take the stairs. All this moving around and people going different ways led to a big problem. People were being mugged on the regular in the stairwells, in the corridors. It became a nightmare. The crime was insane and the buildings were falling apart. In 1971, Prude Igo only had 600 people living in 17 of the original 33 buildings. That same year, federal authorities agreed to demolish part of Prude Igo. By 1976, the whole thing was a pile of debris. Number eight, Queensbridge Houses, Queens, New York. Queensbridge has been such a mess over the years that you could actually take a walking tour now. Sort of like one of those historic battlefield things. An organization known as Jane's Walk organizes public walking tours through the Queensbridge complex. The tours last about two hours and it covers Project's violent history as well as rappers and NBA stars that lived here at one point. I mean, I don't think you lived there once you played in the NBA. 
Queensbridge is located in Long Island City and is the country's largest government housing project with over 3,000 units and just under 7,000 residents. It's still open today. In 2005, a gang known as the Dream Team was arrested in the Queensbridge complex. They were making $10,000 a week in pharmaceutical sales. In March 2015, a public elementary school, which most of the students there live in Queensbridge, had a tutoring session led by a group of teenagers. Well, they decided to set up a fight club, pitting first graders against each other while they watched and placed bets. Yeah, quality education there. Number seven, Marcy Houses, Brooklyn. If you ever want to learn about Marcy Houses, just listen to the music of its most famous past resident, Jay-Z. Yeah, this is where he grew up and where he got his start. He's pretty much covered the violence and the, you know, pharmaceutical trade of this place quite a bit. Marcy Houses or Marcy Projects is in the Bed-Stuy neighborhood of Brooklyn. It has 1,700 apartments with more than 4,200 residents. Marcy Houses is known for being dangerous, run down, and overcrowded. Don't go here. I know there's wonderful people living there, but there are some scary people and some scary things going on there that should probably be avoided. The good news is, just kidding, there is no good news about this place. Number six, Jordan Downs, Los Angeles, California. Our first stop to the Los Angeles area is the projects of Jordan Downs, constructed in the Watts neighborhood of Los Angeles as temporary housing for workers during World War II, but converted to public housing in the early 1950s. We had a lot of people coming in after the war to the Los Angeles area. Everyone was heading west looking for work and, you know, better life. That meant a lot of the inner cities were kind of clearing out in Chicago, New York, St. Louis, places like that. And they all headed west, and a lot of them ended up in Los Angeles. They needed houses, and and a lot of these temporary housing units that we put together for World War II, the shipbuilders or whatever. This was also one of the key places for the Watts riots back in 1965. And throughout the 1980s and 90s, it was just a place for gangs. Growing up in Southern California, you knew this was not a place you needed to be at night or during the day. The homicide rate in and around Jordan Downs is consistently one of the highest in the state and in the nation sometimes. This is also a really interesting thing. It's one of the only places that's named after longtime residents. David Starr Jordan and Samuel Elliott Downs were two of the area's oldest residents. So they named the projects after them. I wonder how they feel about it now. They're not alive, in case you were wondering. So I'm sure they're not feeling much about it. Number five, Nickerson Gardens. Staying in the Los Angeles area, not too far from Jordan Downs, we have Nickerson Gardens and its 1,000 public housing units. Nickerson Gardens consists of 156 townhouse-style buildings made up of single-bedroom units, and it was completed in 1955. Nickerson Gardens is the largest public housing development west of the Mississippi River. Yeah, pretty big. The complex occupies the blocks of Imperial Highway and Central Avenue and southwest of 111th Street and Compton Avenue. It is on the border of both Watts and Willowbrook. All those words that I just said describing the place, to anyone from Los Angeles, they're almost like danger warnings. Imperial Highway, Compton Avenue, Watts, and Willowbrook. Those are four words you never want to hear. It's almost like me saying, that is a skunk porcupine with rabies and a switchblade. You should stay away from both of them. The complex was one of the many locations featured in the action thriller film To Live and Die in Los Angeles. I've been in this one. I was in the military for the 1990s riots in Los Angeles, the Rodney King thing, and we had to do patrols in a couple of the different ones. I've been in this one. It The people seemed nice, you know, at the time. They didn't appreciate us being there, but they were pleasant. It's still a pretty scary thing, and it's a dangerous place. It's gotten better over the years, but it's still pretty scary. Number four, Robert Taylor Holmes, Chicago. Robert Taylor Homes opened in 1962 with 16 high-rises and about 27,000 occupants at its capacity. Over 70% were children. 90% of the units were single-parent households. It was only about five years after completion that Chicago realized this place was a really bad idea. The Chicago Housing Authority called portions of these projects the worst slum area in the United States. Yeah, they actually said that. Chicago's crime rate hit its peak in the 1990s. The Robert Taylor homes were a nightmare for the people that lived there and the city of Chicago. They poured a lot of resources into this place, and eventually they couldn't take it anymore. In 1993, it was estimated that the likelihood of you being a victim of a violent crime in the Taylor projects was 1 in 14. That is just violent crime. That's not 
all crime, you know. Some of the worst cities right now are like 1 in 30 for violent crime. The demolition of the Robert Taylor homes began in 2002. These days, just grass fields. Number 3. John DeShields Homes, East St. Louis, Illinois. East St. Louis is one of the worst cities in the United States when it comes to violence, and John DeShields projects are the worst in East St. Louis. From 2000 to 2018, there was almost 500 homicides in East St. Louis, and over one-fifth were within one block of these projects. The two housing projects in this area, John DeShields and John Robinson, have the most shots fired any other place in St. Louis or East St. Louis. John DeShields Homes had almost double the amount of homicides than any other project in East St. Louis in 2018 and 2019. This place is so dangerous, they put a turnaround on the off-ramp of the freeway. Yeah, if you get off the freeway by mistake and you realize where you're heading, there's a quick turnaround so you can get right back on the freeway. Number 2. Techwood Homes, Atlanta Techwood Homes was the nation's oldest housing project, and it was built to replace a shanty town known as Tanyard Bottom or Tech Flats. It was completed on August 15, 1936. One past resident said it didn't have to be as bad as it was, said it was horrible. People were living in overcrowded, rundown buildings like animals. Graffiti, trash, and gang violence was part of life in Techwood. Except for a few historic buildings, Techwood Homes was demolished in 1996, right before the 1996 Summer Olympics. It is now a mixed-use area called Centennial Place. The first phase opened in 1996, right before the Centennial Olympics in Atlanta. See, that's where they got the name. Centennial Place, Centennial Olympics... Moving on. And number one, Cabrini Green, Chicago, Illinois. This one is probably the worst. While researching this one, I read about some truly horrible crimes that went down in this place. Cabrini Green comprised of several sections built over a 20-year period, starting with the Francis Cabrini Row Houses, which was 586 units built in 1942. Cabrini Homes Extension, with almost 2,000 units and 15 buildings, was built in 1957, and then finally in 1962, the William Green Homes, which were a little over 1,000 units, were built. In total, Cabrini Green covered 70 acres and was located in the city's north side. Not too long after its construction, problems started to develop in the complex. Poverty was just horrible here. Gang violence was just everywhere. It was horrible. And that's just the gang violence. There was normal violence with just weirdos in this place. Like I said, I did far too much research on this one. But in 1981, then Mayor Jane Byrne and her husband decided to move into the Cabrini Green projects to display her solidarity with the residents. She lasted three weeks before moving out. The violence that plagued these projects was horrible. The residents were fearful of leaving their homes. In addition, besides the everyday violence in Cabrini Green, it was also the setting for the 1992 horror film Candyman. The director said that he chose the location to film because it was a place of such palpable fear. Yeah, that's always nice. When a director directing a scary movie says where you live is just so scary, it's fitting. That's great. Demolition of Cabrini Green began in the late 90s with the final high-rise portion of the failed housing project coming down in 2011. Late 1990s to 2011. Took them a while to take those ones down. All right, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Do yourself a favor. Don't look up any of the crimes that went down on some of these ones. They're really, really bad. And uh, yeah, they were kind of upsetting when I read them. But if you've ever lived in one of these, I would love to hear about it. Anyway, don't forget all the links below. Give the video a big thumbs up. Leave a comment. Subscribe if you haven't. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.